We're going to be looking at surveying map symbols, which also can be called landscape features representation in engineering surveying. And what you're going to be learning here is based on this standard. If you're working in the industry, this is the standard. BSEN ISO 11091. So if you're going to be working on any site, you should get yourself familiarized with this standard. The architect cannot start his drawings without you completing your what? Your site map. Isn't it? We discussed this last week. So what we're going to be looking at today is when you get to your construction site and you have actually established your baseline, what are you going to do from that baseline by identifying features on that construction site. The features are one, gates. If there is a gate on that construction site or near the construction site or inside the construction site or at the boundary of the construction site, what is the standard that you are going to use in representing this in your surveying drawing. What we are looking now is how to represent these elements in your drawing. For a gate, you are going to draw a rectangle, then a triangle for a gate, then you mirror this, like this, a mirror of the rectangle and a mirror of the triangle. This, in surveying, is the representation of a gate. I might take you outside, give you a plain map or book for you to represent all the features on that land. Wherever you see a gate, looking at this, I should be able to know that this is a gate on that construction site. Next, how do we represent a tree that we see on a construction site? For a tree, you draw a circle and a dot at the center. This is a tree. We have represented a tree according to this standard. To represent a footpath on a construction site, we use this. This is a foot path in a construction site, according to the standard. You know how to represent a gate, a tree, a foot path. How do you represent a, what is this called? Hedge, yes. How do you represent a hedge that you, can, that you see on a construction site in surveying? For a hedge, you're going to have this, then like this, 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 then you repeat the same thing. This is a hedge. Now you can represent gate, tree, footpath, and hedge in site engineering surveying. I believe after today's class, you can go out and look around and with your paper have a site surveying drawing. How many of you have seen a surveying drawing before in your office? Okay. If you actually work with surveyors, you should be saying this. And when you're done with this representation, you take them to a card drawing and now represent all this. Next, if you want to represent marsh with grasses around it, we usually use this one. You draw horizontal line, then the one at the middle will be longer than one, two, one, two. You draw a horizontal line, 
this one will be longer you have one two one two this this will be longer one two one two this this will be longer one two one two but if you put one there the surveyor will still know that you have a marsh there if you come to a construction site and there are buildings around or you want to represent where the architect should position the building if you don't finish this as we actually saw last week the architect cannot start his full design development and you should know the reason why because you have to the architect to work with the features you have on that on that site the architect to work with the size of the site if there are buildings around or you want to tell the architect where or one of the best places to position the structure you use this for building structures then you have this any engineer or architect that says this knows that these are buildings around that site for example if this is a construction site and you see anything like this you should know that the a building is existing here or a building should be what positioned here if you have this what is it telling you there is a tree here and there is a tree here that's what it's telling you if the architect discovered that there is a tree here or probably there is another tree here do you think that the architect will position the entrance from here possibly but he will consider that there is an existing tree there cutting down the tree will not be dependent on what we mentioned it last week cutting down this tree will be dependent on what we mentioned about regulations that there are trees that you can cut down with without what approval yes some trees are protected uh, i read on the newspaper of a man that went to prison because he went and cut down a tree in excess i think that tree is like about 80 years or so he went and cut it down he was arrested and i've forgotten the number of years of imprisonment they gave him for cutting down that tree so please always check to to make sure that all regulations are ticked before you cut down any tree there are trees that you can get fine for cutting it down some you have fine and prison option we're going to be looking at some of them in one of our classes now we're going to be looking at how to represent cutting i want you to look at this this land this area has what curtains how do you represent such a cutting on a surveying map now you're going to draw a line then you start with the middle it's like it looks like a water droplet you know how you draw a water droplet and this will be the big one and the, these remaining ones will be smaller ones and you're going to have five of them next you're going to mirror this honestly this is not as big as this maybe it's because of my pen if you use the pencil it should be smaller like a small water droplet if you're using a pencil at least yours should be better than this cutting it's just like cut and fill but this one is what cutting not filling but it's the cutting not the filling yeah. you understand it yeah. so yes you met this on site yes you met this on the surveyor met this on site you didn't do it you are just representing features you actually saw very close to that site or that building so 
your aim is just to show that this is what you actually saw. What you found on that side. You are just representing. You didn't actually make those things. Some of them are natural, like the trees and other features. Some of them are man-made. This is a man-made feature. So this one is for a natural one? This is just a... No, this is not natural. This is man-made cotton. Okay. The next feature is embankment. Embankment is just opposite cotton. If you mirror this, you should have this. Cotton and embankment can be a bit confusing. But I want you to see that in the cotton, it's just like you reversing this upside down. You're going to get an embankment. How do you represent roads in a site engineering map? If you remember when we looked at footpaths, with road, it's the same thing. The only difference is that you have a complete line here. This is how we represent roads on a surveying map. How do you represent fences and posts on a surveying map? You use this, a dash line, a dash line, a dash line, and this. This is for posts and rail fences. So, this is what orchards. If you want to represent orchards, it's like trees. But this time around, you're going to have like a couple of them. This is orchards. Now can represent roads, posts, rail fences, orchards, cutting slopes, embankment, marsh, building, gates, trees, hedge, footpath. Let's look at how do you represent bridges. You are going to have one, two horizontal lines, then this, and descend this way. This is how we represent a bridge in site surveying. How do we represent a pond? One, you repeat this, two, three. This is a pond. If you bring back all this on a map to the office, all the engineers there, the architects, they can visualize how the site looks like, even when they have not gone there themselves. So you maintain the standard so that everybody can understand what you have brought back. One way we communicate in construction is by what? Drawings, good. Drawings helps the team to understand and visualize what the site looks like, even before they even go there themselves. Benchmark. How do you represent benchmark on a construction site? We use one, two, three. This is a benchmark. And you must state the height of elevation. Every benchmark has what? A height of elevation above the sea level or below the sea level. So this is the benchmark and this is the height above sea level. In surveying, it is the three decimal places. Before the surveyor will even come to this site, he has already known the, some of the nearest benchmarks on that construction site. Now we're going to be looking at the difference between datum, benchmark, control points. We use this language, but let's see, they are similar, but they are different. If there is a wall on your construction site or very close to your construction site. How do you represent this wall on a survey map? A wall. Some site engineers will shade this, while some can leave it like this. So this is a wall. You are going to state one, the type 
of wall, you are going to state 2, the height of the wall. You are going to state 3, the width of the wall. In this session, you have learned how to represent some symbols like walls, gate, tree, hedge, footpath, marsh, building, cutting, embankment, road, post and rail fence, bridge, pond, and benchmark. This is very important when you are going to be working in a design team.